Hi guys, it's Friday. Welcome. I am coming to you from New York. We are still sheltering in place here. So I'm bringing you um, through my home studio. So it is very overcast here today. Um, so the lighting's a little weird here. I got a little bit of a glare from that light behind. So we are keeping it real and um, we're gonna, we're gonna stamp today. Um, I hope a lot of you are still stamping it forward. Um, definitely hashtagging Stamp It Forward. Let us see what you're making. We would love to see it. We'd love to also post it on our Instagram and Facebook feeds. We are gonna use those spread love stamps today. We're going to show you how you can embellish something that you either have in the house or something that I just picked up um, at the dollar store. So we're gonna start with, does everybody see that? I know you have quite the reflection today. So we're gonna start with ID tags. So this one says, our mom, our hero. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna use sticker guides today and learn how to stamp in a circle around your disc. So, and then I got a visit because I put it out there. Obviously, I am a hand stamper, metalsmith by trade. I do not have a stethoscope in my house. So I had a couple of hours ago, the North Patchogue Fire Department, EMS, came and swung by. And this belongs to one of our own in my town. His name is Brian. So um, you'll see a better picture of it when I show it to you on my block. I'm gonna show you how to make collars for you, your husband, or that special friend that's on the front lines right now. I'm gonna show you also how to go around and make a spiral today also. So that's the fun stuff we're learning today. So the tools that I'm going to be doing those with is we're gonna use the ring bending plier to make that collar. We are going to also use the round nose pliers to get that curl that goes around. All right, so we talked a little about uh, stamping it forward. I definitely, guys, want to get this movement taken off. If you take a look on Instagram, the feed is full of all of your creations. We love to see what you're working on. We love to see you stamping it forward. It doesn't only have to be those 5 eighths bracelets that we gave out in the beginning of the month. It could be anything that you have laying around your block. So stamp it forward. Happy Friday. We're gonna do some technique today. I'm gonna to show you how to use the circular sticker guides, the really tiny ones that are in your book. Um, we're gonna use Stargazer today and we're going to utilize the spread love stamps. Um, I know you saw my sample is with the stethoscope. Maybe we'll use the rainbow. Depends on how we feel when we get to the block. So without waiting any longer, I'm gonna take you over and we're gonna start working. So here is the first one. And you could say, you could see it says, our mom, our hero. And it's just basically, I put it on a, a little um, ID tab. Let me bring this over. That I purchased really quick um, at the dollar store. So you see that is the gorgeous stethoscope stamp that we have. And it looks a lot like this. All right, so let me see if I could zoom in on that detail and those fine crisp lines. Okay, so that's how it looks. Now this is on an alchemy disc. It's a 7 8 round, okay? And it does not have the hole in it. So it's a regular round blank. And then let me show you the collar. See if I could get that there we go our dad our hero and this is done with the alchemy strip okay and the font that we i used on this that we're going to use today is stargazer stargazer is the signet new signature font one of the new signature fonts and this is the uppercase okay there we go. And it's really easy to do this and to form it. All you're gonna need 
is your ring bending plier and you're gonna need your round nose pliers as well. So I'll show you. Let's grab those. So round nose plier and your ring bending plier, okay? So those are the two tools we're gonna to use to bend it. But first we're going to, we are going, oop, and I'm shaking. Okay, we're going to use the round, okay? So I'm gonna pull out my 7H disc, uh, 7 8 disc, all right? And I'm going to use the sticker guides out of the stamp guide book, all right? And I'm gonna pull out my very small ones that I already wrote down what I am going to write on that. So I'm gonna find my center and I'm going to place my round sticker right where I feel that I would like it to go. So I'm gonna somewhat center that. So, we are going to start. I am going to pull my stargazer out, okay? And I'm going to start with my O. Now, when you're working with the sticker guides, when we go across to do a name, we always pull it down. When you're working above your disc, you're going to pull down. You'll see when we get to the around the edge of it, we're going to actually pull our stamp up, okay? So here, we're remembering that Impress Art is always to face you. You're going to place that down and lightly drag it. Does everybody see that? And it catches, your stamp actually catches on that sticker. That's why these sticker guides are so amazing. Bring it down, lightly drag it, take your hammer, and you're just gonna give it a little tap. Do you see that I'm not hitting it aggressively? Let me pull this down to show you. So I'm working with Alchemy, which is a tin-based alloy. Let me see if I could get that a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so you don't have to really be aggressive with your hit on that stamp. Um, the signature line is rated for stainless, so it is extremely sharp um, and nice and crisp. So you really don't want to overdo it with the um, the hit that you're going to uh, use, the pressure that you're gonna use on your hammer. And remember, so I'm just gonna troubleshoot since a bunch of you ordered um, the guides. If you're still having the problem and you're going over your sticker, okay? Because sometimes it's very easy. We get excited and we go over our sticker. Now, bring it down flat. Do you see how I'm flat? You want to tilt it a little bit and drag it, and you'll see that it will catch. That's only if you're having an issue. If you're having an issue being flat and dragging it, you're not really flat. So um, to cheat that a little bit, you're just going to tilt it a little bit towards you and until it hits that sticker. So that's a little bit of a tip and a trick. Again, lightly hit. Same thing with my R. And now I am stamping over a tripod, so I apologize if I'm not quite lining it up with my sticker. It's kind of hard. So when you're stamping, you always want to make sure that you're on a sturdy surface. I know we've gone over that before. You want to make sure that you're stamping with a seal block and that you're using a brass head hammer. Um, I like to use a brass head hammer. We suggest using a brass head hammer because it absorbs the shock um, and gives a nice even impression. Okay, so you see that I'm working around. Now, I'm going to pull that off, pull my sticker off. Um, yes, Angela, you could say, you know what? Stamping hard for me and stamping hard for you really are, could be very different. Um, yes, you would stamp a little harder using, yes, um, but that's why I always recommend having a um, a piece 
on your block or near your block just to test it out before you commit um, to designing a blank. When we talked about bringing it down on the bottom around the edges, we're going to place it down flat and drag it up. So what I like to do is I like to turn my block, okay? So I know that my impress art is always going to have to be facing my inner palm, okay, when I'm dragging. So I'm taking it, I'm laying it flat. And now guys, you see that impression? You could see the bottom of that stamp um, in the metal and that could help you light up. So you're going to lay it flat, lightly drag that up, line that up, give it a hit, and there is my O. And again, I wanna make sure that when I'm stamping this way, I just like to do it this way because I like to line it up. I like to make sure I see it because if you're stamping this way, you can't really see your letters on your sticker guide. So remember that your impress art is going to be facing in your palm when you're stamping to the side. Okay, and you're going to follow your sticker guide. I'm going to use my R. And I'm on to my hero. Now guys, you could replace your O's with the little tiny heart, that heart that I use all the time. Um, the, this one right here. I can know you can see this a little bit better. So this is the 2.5 whimsy heart, but you could always replace any of your O's, like in mom, your O in the middle could definitely be a heart. Um, so you could always switch it up. Let's see, Carly, I'm debating on upgrading my two inch block to a larger one. Do you think it's worth it? To be honest with you, Carly, I happen to really love my larger block. Um, I see nothing wrong with the two inch block. I personally, my personal preference, I like the larger block because sometimes I'm working on multiples. It's easier when I'm working with bracelets. So I, um, I enjoy working with a larger block. And I am, you know, I have big hands. I am a larger gal. So it's just, um, it's just more comfortable for me, but it's really personal preference. So again, flat, lightly drag it, give it a light tap. Is there a trick to stamping up with lowercase letters? Yes, Gina. And we're going to cover that on Monday. Uh, actually, not on Monday, on Wednesday. Okay. So if you want to tune back in, so remember my E when I'm stamping this way is always towards my palm, the palm of my hand, flat, drag it up, give it a tap. Um, I've noticed that it says on your site to not use a rubber piece under your block when you stamp with an ultra detail stamp. So, um, yes, it's really... You shouldn't, it's personal preference. If you were an advanced stamper, um, you, you know, it is, you can do it. You see that I do it. Um, the reason why I'm using it on the live that goes against the website is I have a kid here, a beautiful 10 year old who is tele-educating. So I'm trying not to, I'm trying to respect her teacher um, during her Zoom classes and not make too much noise. So um, I have that under there, okay? Sharon Clark, I make it look so easy. It is easy. It's way easy. You just have to learn your tools. You just have to learn your tools. I've been at this for quite a long time, so I understand that I, I make it easy, but once you learn your font set, guys, you're good. And I make mistakes. Everyone's watched me make mistakes before here. And as I said, I make mistakes. Look, I went right too close to my, to my R here. So, you know, it happens. Um, I really think that when you're stamping, you should be relaxed. 
You know, it's a craft. You should enjoy it. Um, it's not supposed to be perfect. It's not engraved. Um, it's done by hand. So there's always going to be some discrepancies in your stamping. All right. That's what makes it, that's what gives it that handmade look. The new fonts look like they are way easier with the bottom tape. Yes. So with the signature line, we did taper the stamps. Okay. That's all part of it, of it being, um, being, part of the signature line. So if you want, let's see. <laughs> well, I am a loud person in general, Gail. So it's very hard. And, and people in the office who are watching could probably agree that when I come in, I'm sort of like a tornado. So I'm gonna show you really quick the difference between the signature line and one of our regular fonts. Let me pull that out. Okay, guys. Okay. So right here, this H. Okay. This is the signature line. Okay, do you see how it's grinded on both sides and tapered? as opposed to this is Austin that we sell at Michaels. It's an exclusive font for Michaels that I just grabbed. So you can see the difference. See all of that material on either side? The taper just makes it a lot easier to line up your letters. Okay, um, you'll find in some of your sets that, uh, let's say in M, because we're coming out with Bridget shortly, um, and that's going to be part of the signature line. So if you want to upgrade your Bridget, um, I suggest doing so if you'd like. Um, and you'll see that the W in the Bridget and the M, um, and I believe there's a couple of other couple of other letters are not grinded, and that's just because they're very wide on the shank, okay? But for the most part, everything, um, every other letter is. So then I'm gonna take my sticker right off there, and you can see how great that looks, all right? Not to mention my little, my little mess up here. My O is a little too close to my R, okay? But that's, that's perfect, I think personal opinion. Okay. So then I'm going to bring in my thetoscope. Thetoscope. Oof. It's Friday. It's Friday. I am going to use my tape and just fix it onto my block so it's not going to move around. I'm going to take my ultra detail and I'm going to pull this up a little bit so you could see so you're going to, um, no, uh, Angela, uh, Bridget is not being discontinued, not being discontinued in the plated line. Okay. So you're going to place it down. All right. You're going to center it. Okay. You're going to hit it once. Then you're going to bring it back, side, front back to the middle okay and I have hit it a little too hard and I've cupped it so we are going to let's see we're gonna take our um that is definitely something that we'll look into. We're probably out of it, Angela, right now. So um, you could definitely contact sales at ImpressArt, and they'll be able to help you with that. Uh, let's see. Ultra detail stamps could be used on any metal. Um, no, Lindsay, not right now. Right now, these are only available to be used on the... Um, Alchemy, pewter, aluminum, brass, copper. And you could also use it on, I'm just gonna 
take my nylon hammer, give it a couple of hits. Um, 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold. Um, and there you go. So then I'm just gonna color it back in. So brass, copper, ooh, I'm all over the place today. Brass, copper, aluminum, alchemy, pewter. You could do it sterling silver. Um, you could do it on 14 karat gold, 18 and 24. But right now, it's not rated for stainless. Um, this set is rated for stainless. Um, yes, that's gonna, I'm going to do that right now, actually. <laughs> uh, Rachel. Um, okay. So then you're just going to come in. You're going to color it. And flip it around. Color that in. I'm going to... You're going to lightly dab that piece. And then lightly wipe it. Okay. And then you're going to really just use, you could use the GS Hypo, which is right here. Okay. And you're going to just put some dots around the perimeter of your badge ID tag. And then you're going to place your metal right over it. Okay, and I would let it sit for, I would say, a good um, 7 to 12 hours, okay, to make sure that it's nice and hard um, and it formed to it and it's not going to pop off. Okay, so there we go. Now that was using the stamp guides in the, the round circles in the stamp guide book. All right, now we're going to move on to that collar that I was showing you guys before. Um, let me bring it out so I could show you guys. There we go. So now this is done out of the strip. Okay, the strip of Alchemy. Jen will put that in the details. She'll give you a link. Okay, this is our Stargazer font. Now you could use a thicker blank. You know, I would suggest the blank being at least a good inch and a quarter long. You can use a round if you'd like to make it wider. But basically, with that the ring bending plier, you could turn any of your blanks into a collar. Okay. So let's let's do one now. So I am going to pull out. Yes, Lenny, you definitely have to make something like that for Melissa, or you can nominate her, Lenny. Um, all you have to do is comment, like, and share at the end of this Facebook Live, and you will be in the running um, for me to stamp this forward to you, and then you could stamp it forward to Melissa. Or, Lenny, I know you have the tools. You could stamp one for Melissa. So I am going to use my sticker guides for this. I am going to find my center. Okay, I'm just going to rough it right now. And the Stargazer font is really great for these because you could get a lot on this blank because it is very narrow. It's um, a quarter inch. It's a quarter inch by an inch and a quarter. Okay. You could also use um, any of the strips we sell. You can use how to... Any suggestions on how to tell them how to put the collar on this? Uh, okay. Um, 
Hmm. You know what, Carly? Let me think about that. Me and Jen will work on that. And we could definitely, if you send a um, text, uh, text message, if you send a private message, we could um, get that wording for you. Okay, we could work on that for you. So when you're um, when you're donating them, it'll um, it'll be easier. All right. So I'm actually going to walk you through how to put it on the, the that's a stethoscope that I have here. So let's see if we could work on that together. All right. Sticker guides are so handy. So I am going to come in. And I'm going to do, let's say, so you know what? Let's do sister, okay? So my sister, my hero, I like that. So we'll do, let's break that up real quick. Uh, okay. Okay. So we're gonna do, All right, guys, just gonna move that over a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna come in with my M, lightly drag that down. And again, I'm working with our signature font so they are rated for stainless and this is a soft metal so i am going to i'm going to put a heart in the center of that maybe not let me think <laughs> let's go you want to make sure that the impress art's facing you When you're stamping, where is my R? Okay. So there's my sister. Let's see. And we're going to go with my hero at the bottom. Where is my Y? And I'm literally just tapping these guys. You don't have to be aggressive with them. Very lightly. And now when you're working with soft metals, sometimes it makes your blank a little wonky. So I am gonna troubleshoot that for you. Now I'm stamping on the edge of this blank. So it does make it a little challenging. Remember, bring it down. If you can't, if you're having problems with the stamp going over your sticker, you just want to you just want to tip it a little forward. So you catch your stamp on that sticker, okay? Okay, so sometimes it does get a little wonky on the bottom. You wanna flip that over. 
with your nylon head and you just want to give it a couple of taps and it straightens that right back out okay now you can move your sticker up so your fonts are sitting higher that's fine um, remember that this is a quarter inch so if you're just putting it straight across make sure that your blue line lines up let's do that your blue line lines up to the bottom and then you'll be stamping right in the center. But since I decided to do two lines, I should have moved my sticker up just a little bit more, okay? I think I'm going to put put some hearts just like that. So I'm gonna come back in, use my enamel marker. Lightly dab it and lightly wipe it. I'm gonna come back in, fill that in a little bit more. I'm using a regular household paper towel, guys. Nothing's on it. Um, and I'm just dabbing and lightly wiping. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this back a little bit. You're going to come in the center, okay, with your ring plier, your ring bending plier. Does everybody see that? Okay, and you're going to just give it a squeeze. Do you see how that brings up both and forms that? Okay, once you've done that, just like that, I want you to continue it to the end. Oops, continue to the end. Flip that over. Do the same. So it looks just like that, okay? You just wanna make sure that it's nice and curved. Just like that, okay? Then I'm going to take my needle nose pliers take the end and bend that in just like that. Same thing on the other side. And there is my collar. Okay, does everybody see that? Now you could take your buffing block. And like I said, I would start with the fine side first and then go to super fine. And I'm just gonna run it over. to just give it a nice shine. Okay, so you have my sister, my hero. So I am just going to bring this down and then I'm going to slide it off. Just like that, okay? and I'm going to come in 
and you want to squeeze it, okay? Get it on there, turn it, and then push it up. Just like that, okay? And they could always, you know, form it. It's alchemy, so it's soft, but it's not soft enough that it's gonna fall off. Okay? You know, and you could go all around. You could, um, you know, you could come around with names, kids' names. You could go around with these colors. Um, you know, you can do a twist if you like, and I know that's what a lot of you are looking for. So I'm going to show you um, how you could twist it with the needle nose pliers. Um, we do sell longer strips. Um, I don't suggest using bracelet blanks because they are thick and hard to manipulate when it's that much of a turn. Um, I would suggest using ring blanks. Those are really good, the aluminum ring blanks, um, the crossover blanks, um, the wrap rings. No, the Argo Angle Hammer, you cannot switch out these, guys. This hammer is just strictly for metal stamping, okay? This hammer here, this is the multifunction hammer. This is the only hammer that you can um, put different heads in. So the signature in this box, the, the set that I'm using today, is rated for stainless and they're tapered, okay? They're cleaner, they're sharper. Um, your regular stamps in the colored boxes, guys, um, work just as well on all the metals, but you are limited. You cannot use them on stainless steel and they are not tapered. That's the difference, okay? So I'm gonna show you the strips that we have, um, they come in aluminum, brass, and copper, okay? These, uh, how long is the blank? Sharon, the blank that I use on that collar, this one right here, um, is an inch and a quarter by a quarter inch, okay? I suggest using the Alchemy, they're just, they shape so beautifully. So I, um, I, like, I suggest using the Alchemy for the collars, okay? So another thing is the strips. You can use the strips if you wanna go around. These tend to be a little bit more challenging to go around, to go around um, the plastic pieces. Even though they are squishy, um, the strips are a little, you know, they're a little long, so. Well, no, the, the, the smooth and easy stamping, Rita, is because they are rated for stainless. They're a sharper stamp. All right. So we are going to, I'm just going to show you really quick. I am not going to stamp a full one for you, but I will go through it. Um, it's a quarter inch blank, so I want to make sure that I'm lined up. I'm lining up the bottom of my metal. with that blue line that goes across the sticker guide. Now you could still do this with the smaller sticker guides that are in the stamp guide book, okay? They are shorter, but you could still use them if you're not going all around. Um, you could definitely use them on your collars, okay? So I'm just going to stamp a few names here. So I'm gonna start with Jack. And you see guys, I'm working in brass and I'm still not hitting it as aggressively. Um, and I will show you, let me finish this name and I will show you what we did if you just turned tuned in. Okay, so that collar is to go around the neck of a stethoscope. 
okay? So here we go, we have Jack. Uh, let's do Abby. And you don't always have to write on your stickers. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna go all the way down. I'm just going to show you really quick how you can give these a little love and twist them. So I'm gonna pull you back. All right, and I'm gonna come in right at the edge, just like that. So everybody see that piece in there? Okay, and I'm gonna start to turn it, okay? And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna turn it some more, okay? When you're using your needle nose pliers, um, I always like to, and you're bending your metals, I always like to come in and just wrap, wrap them a little bit, okay? Because sometimes when you're twisting around metal, um, you tend to mar the piece that you're working on. And when I say mar, it leaves a little bit of an indentation. And that's uh, something that you could easily take out with a buffing block. But I am just going to be super cautious with this one. So, you know, just to show you guys. All right, so I'm going to come around with my stamp tape. And I'm just going to cover and then clip off my extra, okay? So it's a little like that. And then I'm going to continue to just form it. Do you see how I'm going around that part? And you just wanna keep on coming back and forming it. You could squeeze it. So then when you have that piece like that, you're just going to push it forward. So it's really easy, manip you can manipulate it with your fingers. So between your fingers doing all the work and your plier doing the other 50% of the work, um, you'll get a really nice curve, okay? And you're just gonna continue to manipulate that metal using your fingers. See, we have a curve there. And I'm going to pull it out a little bit more. The more space you have between your loops, the easier it's going to be for them to get that plastic tubing um, inside of those crevices, okay? And I'm going to continue to bend it. With little to no marring on it because now I covered my pliers in that tape so I'm not getting any marring on my metal. And I'm just going to continue to bend it. And you're really just gonna continue to manipulate it all around. So your message could go around your entire blank, okay? Just like that, guys. And you're just gonna continue to do your curves. You could definitely bend these around a pencil as well. I find it easier to use my uh, needle nose pliers. And remember, to protect your metal from any marring, you definitely wanna put that, um, that stamp tape inside there, okay? And then, so it's gonna sit the tube will go through here and it will wrap all around your tubing on your stethoscope, all right? So that's another technique that you could do. I just like, personally, I really like how the alchemy forms around it and stays there. I like the collars. And you could always do collars all the way up you could even do around the top half. Um, it's really up to you, it's your personal preference. If you guys are playing around with this, definitely 
Hashtag us, uh, stamp it forward. Hashtag stamp it forward. We'd love to see um, what you guys are creating. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? And these are great. You can texture them. You could texture around the sides. You could ball peen them. Um, you could pretty much do anything to them. Now, just remember guys, when you're using a three millimeter font, and I'll show you the difference between the three, um, the three millimeter font and a smaller font. If you really, uh, let's see, pull out love. So when you're using a three millimeter font, it pretty much takes up the entire blank. When you're using the two millimeter stargazer, you're able to do two lines on here. And I'll just show you. The difference between both, how nice and small that is. Okay, so your three millimeter font, you'll only be able really to do one, um, it'll take up the quarter inch, okay? If you're working with a smaller font, like the Stargazer, you'll be able to get two lines of font on there. So Rita, to cut the strip of metal, you can use our metal shears, Impress Art Metal Shears, okay? We have these available on the website, and we also have um, the Zeron metal shears on the website. Can you mix the fonts, like starting the first letter with the three millimeter and the rest of the word with the two miller font? Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, of course you can. So... Let's um let's show you. Do you have any uh do you have a word, Maureen, that you'd like to see me do it with? Let's try it. So I will do we'll do love. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it, line that up. And I will use my capital L of my three millimeter. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to move it up a little bit. Move my sticker up a little bit. Actually, I kind of, let's see. Thinking out loud, thinking out loud. Um... The two millimeter front, I wouldn't do two millimeter uppercase if I'm working with a three millimeter uh, lowercase. I would, let me see if I could take out my stargazer lowercase. With my stargazer lowercase, I could probably do that. Let's see, really quick. So I would come in with my sticker and I would just, this has a real loopy L at the bottom. 
So I would line my sticker up as to where um, I'd want that word to go, the rest of my letters. Okay, and I would come in with my O, my V, and my E. So yes, you could definitely mix, that looks adorable. You could definitely mix the fonts. So that's working with a three millimeter uppercase, guys. That's Heartbreaker. And then the rest are the lowercase Stargazer. Let's see if we could finish that off. Let me shine that up a little bit. There's a couple of... You know I've been home for a long time because I'm on the bottom bin, the bottom of the bin of my blanks. So, all right. So I shine that up a little bit. So much better. And let's go back to lining that up at the end. All right, let's bring my U. Okay, so that's my uppercase three millimeter. All right, just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna move my sticker to meet my O, my B, and my E. So do you see how I'm just gonna continue? Guys, definitely move these stickers around. So you know what? I will show you, Maureen, so I'm not too rough on your wallet today. I'm gonna come down and I'll do the uppercase for you, okay? So we have love you. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome, Jill. You are welcome, that's what I'm here for. All right, so this is for Maureen. Um, Maureen's question was, can you use a three millimeter uppercase? Um, could you mix your fonts? So this is my three millimeter Heartbreaker L, my O, my V, my E in a lowercase Stargazer, and my uppercase Y in my Heartbreaker, and my O and my U in... Um, Uppercase Stargazer. I have to really like that, Maureen. I'm going to have to use that um, next time. I like that. I like that font mixed. So definitely, definitely like that. So guys, like you saw, I had a cut lots of little surface scratches on here because it was in the bottom of my bin. You could definitely use your polish, your buffing block, to buff some of them now. Because sometimes they're just superficial. Superficial. You saw how bad it looked before. It doesn't look so bad now. Okay? So definitely utilize those buffing blocks. Let me color that in so you guys can see what that looks like of the mixing fonts. All right. I'm sorry, Shelly, that you've been sick. I hope you're feeling better. I'm just gonna dab it and lightly wipe it. Let's see if I could get that focused. Okay, so there we go. You know, it gives a different, it definitely gives it a different look. I like that. I like that those two fonts that are mixed. Definitely like those. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Can you clean the buffer, Shelly? No. 
Unfortunately, I use my buffer. I mean, I really take a look. Mine are really bad. And I, you know, continue to use them. I mean, and they're still doing an amazing job. And that's really with my dirtiest part. Look how nice that comes out. So I tend to use my buffers until they're, they're you know, ready to leap off of my bench right into my garbage pail. <laughs> yes, Shelly, with the buffers, mine is completely, you saw mine. Um, I have a couple more that are black, black, but they still work. So definitely, definitely keep on using those. Um, let's see, do you get ring blanks the size of your ring size? So Lisa, it really depends. Um, you could go, we have two sizes. I believe one is four to six and the other one's seven to nine in our ring blanks. So it's really up to you. But when you are, um, you know, they're expandable. So when you're using your ring blanks and let's say you're selling these, they're always going to form it to their ring. They're always gonna, not their ring, they're always gonna form it to their finger. Um, I don't know if I have one. He do have one right here. Let me grab that. Um, so this is one of the rings that I cut out last night. Okay, using a blank. So basically, it's nice because sometimes when your fingers swell, you know, it looks beautiful in the front, but you could always adjust it. So it's an adjustable ring. So those, those wrap rings and the band rings that we sell, also, these right here, okay, they're made to be adjustable. So I would definitely just, if you're selling them or you're making them for someone, I would, I would ask them their ring size um, and then go with that. And remember, definitely comment, like, and share this video. And... We will see you on Monday. So Monday is, I've renamed Monday. Monday is going to be our Mandala Monday. And I'm going to show you from the first Mandala pack all the way through to our last one that we released, which was the Geometric Mandala. I'm going to show you how to use all five of those packs. We're going to, we're going Mandala crazy. I'm gonna show you how to use them. I'm gonna, every pattern, we are gonna mix the patterns up. I'm gonna show you how to use the sticker guides. And then, since everyone loved that piece so much that I was wearing, that's what we're gonna be working on, something like that. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.